when you're choosing wisely, Proverbs written by, you guys should know this one, right? Who's Proverbs written by? Solomon, who was the wisest of the wise, right? God appointed him to be wise. He's the wisest of the wise. And so Solomon, Solomon says, uh, the righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. Now that's happy, right? We got choosing your friends wisely, but then it's also got the dark part of the wicked leads them astray. Um, we can't choose our family. Have you ever heard that, that phrase? We can't choose our family, but you can choose your friends. You're like, I fight with my brother all the time, but I have to love him. Um, when you're choosing your friends, you get a choice. You get a choice of who you surround yourself with. All right, are they gonna lift you up? Are they gonna bring you down? Choosing wisely is a good way to lift yourself up. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools, get in trouble. Some of you guys know this more than others. But you kind of take on the personality traits of your group. So, uh, for instance, if you run with a crowd that, well, you know what, we're going to get into this in a later slide, and I don't want to, because I don't want to get too dark too soon, all right? Um, and the last one, 1 Corinthians says, bad company, this is not from the book of Proverbs, but it's Corinthians. If you guys have taken my class before, you know Paul is like my favorite author. But 1 Corinthians says, bad company corrupts good character, all right? So uh, a few drops of oil in a reservoir can contaminate a whole water supply. You guys ever heard that before? You can take a whole water supply, say of like a Navy ship, right? They're on the water, they're on the salt water, and they have a whole water supply that's in a filtration system that's supposed to keep them, keep them hydrated and, and all the people that are on the ship. Well, if you were to spill like a quart of oil, like a bottle of oil into that ship's water system, then all the water in that system, all that it goes through is contaminated, okay? And we'll have an example of that later. You're saying to me right now, um, but Mr. Nelson, you're making it sound like, you know, I should not have friends because they can be bad. And I don't want to say that because it is good to have friends, right? It's good friends. Here's me and some of my friends. That's me. Uh, I'm the handsome one. All right? We're very happy at that point in time. Mr. Olson's always talking about his sports stories, so I had to throw something in there and be like, hey, I did stuff too, right? It's good to have friends. What does a friend do for you? Well, a friend... I got my cards mixed up. Hold on. A friend... Uh, is somebody that should lift you up, right? A friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in a time of need. And so, you should be seeking out friends that lift you up, all right? Therefore, encourage one another, build each other up, as you already are doing. This is Paul talking again. And it's more about building each other up, surrounding yourself with people that are gonna make you feel better about who you are. And then you guys probably have heard this one. This one in our, our weight room, or it's in our, in our NPR. Wrestlers know this one, they're not with us. Are they back yet? No, they're not here. As iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another. Do you know what that means? Right? Iron, like they used to make weapons out of iron, and the only thing that could get the iron sharp again was to rub it against other iron. And it was a rough, gritty process of, of rubbing iron against other iron, making the edges to bend straight. I know that's a weird word, bend straight. But as you work with a knife and stuff, the edge gets chipped and it gets tangled and things like that. 
Well, sharpening the iron against other iron straightens it out, makes it thin, makes it sharp, tears off all the other edges. As iron sharpens iron, so one friend sharpens another. All right? Um, I had an activity, but I'm going to move it to the end. Um, Mitchell? Is Mitchell here? Why Benga? You know in the student council room, those, those, uh, the sticks that we were using to lift up? The sticks we were using to lift up? Uh, when we did the activity in the room, you don't remember that? Does anybody, you remember, Allie? Were you go grab that? They're in the student council room. All right. We'll get back to that. Okay. All right. All right. Don't be a frog. Don't be a frog. Now, frogs are cold-blooded. Does anybody know what cold-blooded means? <laughs> cold-blooded. Uh, it doesn't mean just you're really, like, tough and you stare danger down in the face and don't blink. A cold-blooded animal adjusts their body temperature to fit their environment, right? So, like a frog could live in the desert and, and warm itself up, and the same frog could live in colder climates because it could cool its body temperature down. So a guy did an experiment where he put a frog in a small amount of water in a pot on a stove. I saw faces go, oh, right? And he turned the temperature on low. And he started to heat the water up. Now, what is a frog good at? What is a frog good at? Jumping, right? So could the frog get out if the frog wanted to get out? Yes, okay? Now, they started to turn the, the temperature up gradually. Now, the frog could jump out, but the frog found it just more relaxing to change and adapt its body temperature with the boiling water, or with the, with the water as it got warm. It wasn't boiling yet. Sorry. Frog soup. Um, the man continued to turn the the water temperature up as he went, and the frog continued to adjust. Well, it had already gone this far, so it's just gonna keep adjusting. Now, it kept going, the water got hotter, the frog's body temperature got hotter, so it made it balanced with the water, and the frog was comfortable. Until the water got near boiling, and once the water got near boiling, the frog decided, okay, I can't get any hotter than this, I gotta jump out. But, by that time, the, water, the frog had wasted all of its energy on adjusting its body temperature with the water going up and up that it couldn't get out anymore. Its muscles and its body was too tired to jump out of the pot. And then for those of you light at heart, they stopped the experiment and lifted the frog out and everything was good. I'm hoping, okay? But what does this have to do with your friends? Well, we talked about surrounding yourself with good people. Don't be a frog. So when you're in a, in a social group that starts out uh, maybe in a way that is less than uh, what you would consider your standard of what a Christly friendship slash relationship would be. Uh, you adjust. I'm not gonna do the things that they're doing, but I'm gonna ad just adjust and accept it. Well, that's, that seems like not a big deal, but then as that group grows in their deceitful ways, and you adjust more to accommodate with that, like it starts off with, hey, I'm talking on my phone during class, texting, right? You guys love that example, that's the best one. 
right? Uh, you're gonna answer the text, or you're gonna, it's a group text, you're gonna, you're gonna check it, or Snapchat, sorry, you guys don't text. Um, but then it turns into, hey, you know, I have answers to the test. Well, I'm not gonna text the answers to the test, but, you know, I'm not gonna tell on them for, for sharing the answers. Then it turns into, hey, I took a picture of the test. Okay, well, I'm not going to tell on them, and it's already there, so I kind of looked already, so I'll just open it. Well, they're sending the test around to everybody so that they can see it before they take it. Well, you get where I'm going with this? These little adjustments. Now, if I were to say right from the beginning and say, you go from texting in class to stealing a test from a teacher and, and selling it. That's a big jump. That's a big jump. Don't get any ideas, by the way. That's a big jump, but gradually, gradually it doesn't seem that big. We can be frogs, just adjusting a little bit here, a little bit there. That's the norm. That's the norm. Well, everybody else does it, so it's not that big of a deal. Well, everybody's doing that, so that's not a big deal. But there's always gonna be somebody who pushes that a little bit further. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Who are you surrounding yourself with? Um, I got my stick, so I wanna do an activity. All right? Because right now you're thinking, Mr. Nelson, uh, this sounds uh, pretty, pretty bummer. Like, you, you're getting on us for, for adjusting and being bad kids when we're not. So I need some volunteers. Does anybody want to volunteer and do something for me? I, I need, like, six, six of you. Six of you. Justin, why don't you come up here? You can come on up here. Uh, Katie, come on up here. Logan, come on up here. I need two more girls. Let's get two more girls. Carrie, come on up here. Maddie, you got props list. Come on up here. All right, come on up here, guys. Stand up here. All right, I need... I need you to face this way. Maddie, come here, face that way. Kind of just look at Logan. Carrie, stand here. Why don't you get over here, Justin? Come on over here, Aiden. Not cool. Katie, come on over here. All right, face each other. Face each other in a line. Like, stand on each side of this stick. Facing, face her. There we go. Aiden, step up, face her. Okay, now I want you to stick your, your fingers out like this. Okay? And now, in between, like that. So they're not touching, but they're in between. I'm gonna make it flat. All right? I need you guys to scoot in just a little bit. Scoot in. This, this way, this way, this way, this way. Okay, so I need you to put, this is about surrounding yourself with good people, believe it or not. So I need you to put your fingers on the stick. So make sure you're touching the stick. Katie, you're not touching the stick. There you go. There you go. Okay, now, this is kind of a teamwork exercise, all right? But it, it brings me to a good point where, now make sure your fingers don't leave the stick. You have to be touching it, okay? and just hold it there for a second. Hold it there. At the same, no, 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 keep it down. Keep it down. Keep it, no, you gotta touch the stick, Logan. You gotta touch the stick. No, okay, sorry, Let's try this again. Put your fingers back where they were. Okay, now I want you, when I say go, I, you're gonna slowly just lower it gently to the ground, but you don't take your fingers off of it, Logan. They were raising don't, it up. don't take your fingers. So slowly, Aiden, you got to keep your fingers on it. But slowly lower it to the ground. Ready, go. Okay, ready, go. Go. Will you guys lower it to the ground, please? Guys, lower your fingers. Lower it to the ground. Uh, I can't. Go sit down. You guys. Okay. Now, now, 
Do you guys know this, this activity is called the helium stick, right? You can't lower it to the ground. You can't, you can't lower it to the ground. And this is, if we thought about every finger underneath that stick as, as a positive person lifting you up, right? They weren't even lifting the stick, right? They just were keeping their fingers there to touch the stick, but just all their energy together couldn't help but lift the stick up. Now, if you think about that as your friend, if you surround yourself with people that are constantly building you up, right? There's no way that you can even be brought down. I ask them to lower the stick. And they, I mean, granted, that's not a great friend-making exercise because they're like, lower the stick! Logan's like, I'm not touching it! They keep lifting it up. All right? And all it took for me, though, I, I just, I put one finger on the top. And it holds the stick where it is. They couldn't tell. And it doesn't take a lot to bring you down. But if you surround yourself with good people, and the more good people you surround yourself with, and the more people that lift you up that you surround yourself with, the better off you are. Nothing can bring you down if you have good people lifting you up, even bad times, right? So there's this great thing that Paul says, um, says, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. By the way, when we were going to do that activity, there's, that's my kids. That's my kids. Aw, thank you, okay? So, and, and so my wife made this picture, and it's so good because this, I left this out of the PowerPoint because I knew I had it on this picture. Two are better than one because they have good return for their labor, for if either of them falls, one will lift up his companion, right? Two are better than one. It's math. Kuiper is two more than one. Okay, we'll, we'll get a real math teacher in here to talk about it sometime. But anyways, now you say to me, but Mr. Nelson, but Mr. Nelson, uh, one thing you could say is Jesus went around and hung out with, you know, lepers and he tax collectors, which were really bad at the time. I don't really have anything against tax collectors right now, but they were considered scum, right? And Jesus did do this. Jesus did do this, but he also surrounded himself with people of like mind, after the same goals, that were not selfish, that were, they were there to lift him up, and he was there to lift them up. Now, you could say, but Mr. Nelson, we're not going to find friends that we get, away, get along with all the time. We're not going to find like-minded friends all the time. That's hard, and it is. It is super hard. Uh, you don't want to have to walk on eggshells around your friend. Uh, how many people have you fight with their best friend? How many people fight? That's good. Shh. Hands down. It's okay to fight with your friends, not probably physically. That might, although if you're like boxing friends or something like that. But it's okay to have arguments with your friends. All right? We're only human. We make mistakes. Well, if people are choosing friends, some of you may be thinking, maybe not out loud. Maybe not out loud, but if we're choosing friends, 
I'm probably not going to get chosen. Maybe that's running through your mind. Maybe I'm not the best friend. Maybe I don't deserve the best friend, right? We make mistakes, Mr. Nelson. I don't want people to think that they shouldn't surround themselves with me. My friends don't lift me up all the time. Does that mean that they shouldn't be my friends? Well, no. No, we're, That's not what it means. We're going to talk about that in just a second. And you say, you make it sound like a kid's movie, Mr. Nelson, like everybody gets along. Oh. Ho, hum. And Tigger's like, if, okay, right? Right? Shh. Guys. Girls. It's not. It's not. In my experiences, sometimes it's more like this. All right? Which is still like a kid's show, kind of, but not. Okay? It's a cartoon. But friends... They make you mad sometimes. You know, in Proverbs it says your job as a friend is not to walk on eggshells. It's not to be nice all the time. Right? Sometimes your friends say things that hurt. But Solomon says, you can trust what your friend says even when it hurts, but your enemies want to hurt you even when they act nice. I don't really need to explain that. I, I think you guys can know. You guys have had somebody be nice to your face and say something mean behind your back. But it takes a real friend to say something that maybe you're not going to take well to your face and as long as it's something that helps you grow. I like this one because it says, whoever rebukes a man will later on find more favor than someone who flatters him with his words. All right? There's a lot of confusion about what this word rebuke means, right? Because we hear it a lot in Bible class and stuff like that. Rebuke, and this is the definition of rebuke. Express strong disapproval or criticism of, of someone or to someone because of behavior or actions. Because of behavior or actions. How many times have you done something that you shouldn't have and somebody rebukes you? Are they doing that out of because they enjoy making you feel bad? Hopefully not. Sometimes. Right? Those people wouldn't be my friends, though. But a true friend will, will sometimes knock on your head, hey, what are you doing? That wasn't smart. Thanks for the knocking, guys. That's good. Don't, don't do it. All right? Shh. Find more favor than someone with flatters. Someone that, that tells you, Oh, no, you did good. The other people are stupid for being mad that you, you know, threw eggs at them. They're, it's their fault. No, your friend would be like, what are you doing? That's stupid. Don't do it. Being a friend is hard sometimes. Shh. Being a friend is hard sometimes. All right? It means making tough choices. It means telling people... Not always what they want to hear, but something that they need to hear. Like leaning over to somebody next to you in chapel and saying, Shh, Mr. Nelson's talking. I brought that on myself. So, you guys, I'm 
this part of the verse that we read already. But with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourself. After all this, this is kind of what I want you to take away. All right? So listen. If you've zoned out this time, that's fine. But listen now. Okay? A good friend regards you as more important than themselves. And if you're thinking, okay, now I need to go evaluate who are my friends and who are not my friends and things like that, think about this. When you're looking for friends, a good friend doesn't ask, man, how can I find better friends? That's not the question you need to be asking right now. It's not how can I find better friends or how can my friends be better? What you need to be asking right now is how can I be a better friend? Because friends attract, good friends attract good friends. Bad friends are stuck with the leftovers. Okay? How can I be a better friend to my friends that I have now? How can I lift them up? And remember this, loneliness has nothing to do with how many people you have around you. Okay? Loneliness has nothing to do with how many friends you have around you. Because you can have as many friends in the wor- as you need in the world and still be lonely if you don't have a good friend that is willing to put you above them. Lift you up, not bring you down. So please, think about that this week. You don't need to go around telling people that you don't want to be friends anymore. That's not what it's about. All right? But be a better friend. If we all, if we all are better friends, I mean, there's no limit there's no limit. You can have as many friends. You can have as many friends as there are in this picture. Yeah, that's you guys. Uh, shh. So what we're gonna do right now? We're gonna pray. Shh. We're gonna pray. And you're gonna go back to clubs. Uh, art clubs stick around, and uh, I think also intramural club. If you could help, we need to stack all these black chairs. So I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Let's pray, and you guys will be dismissed. Dear Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you so much that we're able to come to this place. Um, Thank you for our friends. I thank you for showing us the love that we can hopefully show others. Um, I just pray that we glean information, we we gather information from this, this chapel and from our teachers and from our friends this week and that we lift each other up and make wise decisions on who we surround ourselves with. Uh, I pray that as we head into the spring and the end of the school year, things like that. Um, We build our relationships and form strong bonds so that we can have a great next year junior high, next year in high school, and a great summer, and, and a great end of the year. Just lifting each other up, being with each other in Christ, where two or more gather in his name, there he is with them. So a great way for us to show our love for you is to show love for one another. Be with us in everything that we do. In your awesome name, amen.